Hello, this is Jean-Marc from uh, Millibox, and today we are talking about radar. In particular, we are talking about MBX33R, which is our new bundle for millimeter wave radar testing. And I want to show you the different components uh, of it. And that's to say that it's, a, it's, it's a bundle of a, a chamber, a positioner, and a, a series of accessories that are used as radar target to evaluate the performance of our millimeter wave radar. Why do we do this? And it's because there's a lot of uh, activity around, of course, everybody knows uh, 77, 81, that's gigahertz, that's for the automotive radar. But there's a lot of side activity at 60, at 24. Uh, uh, there is uh, activity now going up to 125, even some people are talking about 240, 245 gigahertz. So that's all interesting, and we want to know how we're going to test that and how we're going to use Millibox uh, uh, components um, to create a millimeter wave performance radar testing. So for us to understand M MBX uh, 33R setup, uh, the first thing is to look at the chamber. The chamber in the MBX 33R bundle, that's an MBX 33. Here we have an MBX32. The difference between the two, as you know, is MBX32 has two cubes, MBX33 has three cubes. So it's not much difference. It's the question of uh, size. Here we have one meter far field uh, distance between, the, between the, the, the probe and the positioner. Whereas in, uh, in an MBX33, we would have something around 1.8 meter. Um, so there's the major, that's, uh, that's the only difference between the two. Uh, they, what they have in common is that you have the instrument bay, you have the large cube, the 30-inch uh, cube. It gives you ample space, and that's going to be very important for next activity that we'll have with radar when we'll have multiple targets. We'll see that in a minute. All right, so our second component is the, uh, is the positioner. If we look a little bit closer, we are seeing the Tier Gimbal 4 300X. 300X is the recent model uh, positioner where you, we, we have three axes, azimuth, elevation, and polarization. So we have three axes, and that's going to be useful for our test. So we're going to use, uh, we're going to use all three axes. As usual, for those familiar with uh, Gimbal 4, we have the laser on the side uh, offset. We have 30 centimeters of room to, put our, to place our, our DUT. Our DUT is a radar module from Texas Instrument. Here you can see we have a camera module, and the camera module will play a role to look at uh, the, 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 vis the, the visual from the camera versus the visual from the radar. And we're going to compare those. Uh, that's that's uh, part of our demo. Both oh, the camera and the radar modules need USB. USB is wired through the axis so we fish the two USB cable from uh, through the, the rotation center of the polarization axis and the elevation axis. Then we go down the arms here. Then we go through the elevation, the azimuth axis through the middle, and then we go through the deck. It's that easy to route any kinds of cable. Here we have two USBs. MBX33R is unique because it has that accessorized wall of fixed and moving target for radar performance testing. Okay, so when we look inside, this is a still our positioner facing this wall, and this wall is our accessorized wall specific to an MBX33R, where you have nine positions that are pre-equipped pre to mount different accessories. The accessories in our case can be of two types. One type is a fixed mount, one type is a moving mount uh, uh, for corner reflectors. So here we have, in our example today, we have a 2.4 inch trilateral corner reflector, but we could have other sizes depending on your application. Okay. The fixed mount is just a mount for a corner reflector. The moving uh, uh, accessory is called Lean4. Lean4 is our first generation programmable linear trailer. There's a software for it that's delivered with it. It's in Python, 
you have all the source code as with the positioner and it's programmable to make different rate of oscillation, different course of oscillation. We can have a look on the other side. So on this side, you see we're on the, we're on the opposite wall and we're seeing the nine accessorized positions that are pre-mounted with bolts so that you can attach a, cor a corner reflector, right? So, for example, you have a fixed mount like this one, 2.4 on the side, trioidal corner reflector, the mount with the footprint, the, the basic footprint for all of our accessories. And then you would typically open the plug and the absorber and then fit it like this on the, on the wall. So you would attach your accessory. So as we mentioned, Lin4 is programmable with the software provided in Python and you have all the source code and there are different modes of uh, programmation and it can, you can program it for a, a course from zero millimeter to 25 millimeter and from a rate of zero to Hertz to up to two Hertz of oscillation rate. The rate and the course will mimic the kind of target that you want to emulate for your radar. So why, why would we want to do this? You need something like this because when you test your radar, you know, like point-to-point -point fashion and in, in a, st a straight environment, you're not getting the full story of what your radar can do, right? You have, you have to see what is, the, what is the view, what is the view angle, how much you can detect, you know, what is the distortion in terms of uh, 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 accuracy in, in speed and, 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 and distance uh, at as as you move away from the the, the center of your beam, uh, how, depending on how many elements you have in the phase array of your radar, you can get you know wider or a smaller beam. All that is very important to understand the capability that you have with your system. Additionally, when you start putting your radar uh, board and system into into uh, an enclosure, you can add. Uh, uh, additional, you know, distortion effect, uh, blind spot, and other problems that you could detect with a setup like this. Here we're gonna do. We're gonna play with a little experiment when we're gonna see all that. We're gonna play with uh, uh, a 60 gigahertz radar and uh, and a, a camera that's mounted on the on the system, and with two targets, a fix and a, one fix and one moving target, and see how those effects uh, can impact your performance. So here now we have our setup. So you can see our screen, we have a little uh, application that give us the, uh, the, the range uh, profile. And as you can see, we have our moving target and we have our position already with the radar and the camera. This video here uh, is when we are on the, uh, we are on the mounted on the gimbal itself, right? So that camera is on the positioner just next to the radar. So what we are seeing on this camera is what the radar is uh, seeing. And that's going to be important going forward. And we can see the center, the center target is moving. Here we have the, uh, the graph of the FFT from uh, this uh, 60 gigahertz radar. Take a close look at the, uh, the range profile in the graph as I close the chamber. So you see how much we cleaned up the environment now now we have a, a peak you know uh here at about one meter that's that's our target and that's what we expect to to to, to take right and then everything is clean you want to see that again and then you open the door and then all the uh the problems you have tons of ripples and things everywhere on the uh on the range profile so that's the first uh the first answer to our question, do we really need a chamber? And the answer is most likely yes. We have a camera module and a radar module that are both sitting on the platform of the Gimbal 4 300X. And we are depicting a, a tilted square pattern in space with regards to two targets, one being the moving target centered and the fixed target in the corner. Uh, the fixed target will be detected by the FFT algorithm, whereas the, uh, the moving target is going to mainly be detected by Doppler. 
because they're in the same plane on the wall in front of the uh, in front of the, the the radar it's hard for the radar to be able to distinguish between a moving target and a fixed target which are in the same plane and we see that uh, we have clearly like two squares that are you know aside from each other the the, the yellow being the moving uh, target and the red being the fixed target and we can clearly see that the the pattern uh, is is detected as uh, as we expected as you know those are like uh, off the shelf algorithm there is no particular uh, tricks uh, that we we did on the radar domain there are things that are much more elaborate that you can do here we're just using a simple uh, uh, reference kit uh, from Texas Instrument for the, at, at 60 gears for this experiment, and just uh, using off the shelf algorithms uh, from their kit. And just it's just to give you an idea of how easy it is to design, you know, new test cases to really uh, benchmark the performance of your radar design or system or algorithm. Many of our customers in the radar space use these types of setup, you know, like the EMBX 33R uh, or some derivative of it with different accessorization for it to design their test cases and, and their test environment for performance uh, testing in millimeter wave radar. So that's what I wanted to show you today. All right, so this is uh, the walk through the uh, MBX 33R. Very quickly, we uh, saw the you know the importance of the uh, chamber itself, the uh, positioner uh, capabilities. We saw the accessories on the wall with the nine uh, possible uh, target there, and how that constitute a pretty uh, good setup for radar performance testing, whether it's in the design phase or uh, down to the uh, production phase. So I hope you like the uh, presentation about the M MBX uh, 33R. Um, that's all for today. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. And other than that, talk to you later.